Today, we're talking about a most frequently asked question that I get from my clients who are looking to sell their home when I meet with them for one of the first times. Can you guess what that question is? Well, I'll tell you. It's, do you do open houses? Now, at first thought, you might think, well, I didn't even think to think about open houses, but we're going to have a discussion today because you might be thinking on one end, I'm going to let my agent work for me and this is a way that they can show value and everyone else does it. So yeah, do an open house, go to work and sell my home. On the other end of the spectrum, you might be thinking about the security associated with having an open house and your belongings and having an influx of people potentially come through. And on the other hand, you may be thinking, what am I going to do for four hours with pets, with kids and naps and things like that? And you're like, I just don't think I want an open house. So I'm here to bring clarity and a few different perspectives on open houses for your consideration today. There's one thing I want to start off by saying, and is it, did you know that less 3% of buyers actually visit open houses, according to the National Association of Realtors. Now that's staggering to me. When we have a majority of agents and sellers, I would say doing open houses, yet the yield of the buyers that you're actually getting through from the data indicates that a very, very small percentage of buyers come through your home. So is it effective? Is it for you? Well, I'm Melissa Shaw, Lewis Realtors, and I'm here to share with you today some thoughts again to consider when you're considering an open house and whether it actually is a good thing for you or not. I also wanted to share, piggybacking off that 3%, that 97% of buyers are seeing and searching for homes online. And again, this is according to the National Association of Realtors. And of them searching online, 51% of buyers actually write an offer and get an accepted offer and get in contract to purchase on homes that they viewed online. Are you starting to see where I'm going right now with all of this? So let's go over some pros and cons and other concepts around open houses that I feel that you as a consumer, as a seller, should be aware of when you're looking to sell your home. Now, yes, there could potentially be an increase of exposure when you're hosting an open house. Your agent's promoting it, it's going out to their sphere, their brokerage, across brokerages. So there's definitely a potential to increase your exposure. However, typically you're banking on people being available in that window of time on that day that suits their schedule. And what I've experienced personally is Unless your home is in a high traffic area or a very sought out location, traffic is typically not high and you're sitting there for several hours where your agent's professionalism and expertise could be used in other ways of marketing your home. There is potential convenience for you as a seller. I mean, not all sellers it's convenient for, but there is a potential convenience to where you could have a flurry of people come through. And however, the downside to that is if you do have a flurry of people come through, statistically, it has been indicated that buyers prefer private showings because in private showings, they're able to be more open. They're open about their true feelings. They take longer time to view the home. So when you have a flurry of people come through, then it tends to take away from that. And it tends to take away from potential buyers looking at your home in detail and potentially with their out their agents more often than not without their agents. And I mention that because it could be a potential bump in the road later down the line if you do decide to accept an offer from someone who's come to an open house without their agents. Now bear in mind, again, from the National Association of Realtors, 89% of buyers have buyer's agents. Now on the flip side of that, if you're in a high traffic area and you have a very desirable property, it's in the primo location, and other people see that there's all this activity going on in the home, then this may incentivize them to make a decision sooner 
and to write offers and get them in sooner, which could drive up multiple offer situations. Another advantage for open houses is the sellers tend to get real time live feedback. So you're not having to wait. So if you need to make any adjustments on your listing, your price, your terms, any modifications, then you're able to do that somewhat pretty effectively and efficiently. Open houses, in my experience over 21 years, has been that you do get looky-loos. You do get people coming through your home that may not be qualified, more often than not, that are casual, more casual lookers. And that could mean that you're really tying up some time that a qualified buyer could come and look. And it could add to the lack of security just in having an open house because if you've got people going through, you know, you can't be in all places at once. So definitely if you do have an open house, put those valuables and confidential information away. On another note with the casual lookers, the casual lookers, they may be incentivized just by coming by. They may not have planned to write an offer on your home or be as interested as they are on your home. But there is that rare occasion where they were like, wow, this really got me off the fence and I love this property and I am going to write an offer. So it is a possibility um, that casual lookers can end up writing an offer and it working out, although a smaller probability. You should also know, it's, I think it's really important to know, and I don't know that this is really even shared a lot, it could be, but open housers are a complete lead source for agents. They're a way for agents like myself to potentially get business. Now, do I host my own open houses? Very, very rarely. Do I do open houses? Very, very rarely. And I can discuss the reasons with you in person, voice to voice, face to face. But it really what it comes down to is your unique property, your unique location, your thoughts on the pros and cons and my opinions, and in the event that you still want an open house, I'm going to make sure that I've got a trusted colleague that's doing the open house for you, that knows your property as well as I do, and has got a vested interest for you and not just to solicit buyer, potential buyers that come through and get other clients. So I really got to know that, and you really should know when you're hiring an agent, that they're there for you and how they handle this whole process. The other reason I don't typically do open houses is because I'm an all or nothing gal for my clients. I'm 110%, so I do not do dual agency for multiple reasons. But for the reasons of open houses, it is nice to have a colleague do them that is trusted because then they have the opportunity to represent a buyer who may be unrepresented when they come through the door. And in a dual agency relationship, if I was to represent the buyer and the seller, I cannot perform all my duties, full duties to you. And to me, that's just a non-negotiable. I need to provide all my expertise, all my experience, and all my services to you as my client. In the end, I'm about doing what makes sense and what works for you as my client. If this information really hit home with you and you'd like to pick my brain more and discuss a strategy for making your move happen, simply click the link below and let's have a conversation.